Hello and you are listening to FP Cast, the official podcast for fruitless pursuits where we will shit about the week in pop culture. I'm Luke. And I'm Jacinta. And this week we're talking about... White man pain problems. The movie. New soundboard that everybody's really excited about. Oh Oh my god. Wow, thanks everybody. This is a new era of FP cast. Mm -hmm. Not only are we uh, using headphones, and don't picture like studio rig, we're sharing a pair of earbuds. Little Sony earbuds. Almost ripped your. Ear off, yeah. A second ago, yep, yep. by thinking that they were independent, they're not. But but I think what's most exciting about the new equipment is just how it's going to make the podcast overall sound far far more professional. Smoke weed every day. Whoop whoop. We get look. We have flashbacks. Yes. We, we've got everything here. Yep. We've got all the stuff. Mm. Well, what about if we're like in a really kind of Mortal Kombat-y kind of mood. Is there something for that? Get over here! Oh, my God! I know. Look, everything is at our fingertips now. Um, obviously, we're very professional. Uh, we're not going to abuse that. And I don't want you to think that it's just all internet soundboard stuff. I mm-hmm. have curated... I say curated mm-hmm. because we're talking about art here. Yeah. Uh, I have curated a special selection of sounds specifically for our show yes. that I think people will appreciate. Yep. Things like... Uh, you remember the Mummy trailer? I what, do. What, what was the standout thing there? Um, oh, it was Tom Cruise's wonderful uh, emotive scream. Oh, do you mean? <laughs> That's the one. And uh, what what was the great thing about the Diego Luna Rogue One interviews? Oh well, I loved uh, how he couldn't pronounce. Well, I can't say he can't pronounce Jabba, but he pronounced uh, Jabba in his own special uh, Spanishy way. Yabba, come on. He was, so, he was so excited about it all. Um, people have talked about, of course, there's some Australian uh, things in here as well. Uh, you know, Lara Bingo. Hello, everybody. How are you? Uh, oh, bingo. How, uh, she, how could she not be in there? You. Uh, we've talked before about uh, this famous ad. Oh, I'm a single mum with a daughter. Got, so good. Got that on hand. So just good. In case just we, in case we ever need there's that. There's that very specific niche. And, uh, that um, we need to address. And, and even I've got stuff a book was better. You know how, like, lately, you just pretend that you listen. Okay. Um, lately, instead of voting for the book or the movie, yeah. I voted for a piece of bread. Okay. But just like the old uh, country split bread, uh, yep. famous here in Australia. Oh, Mum, give us a bit of that buttercup country split. Oh, brilliant. And I know this is a favourite of yours with uh, Beauty and the Beast coming what out. What if she is the one? <gasps> what if she is the one? And so look, good. Just, just so many wonderful things are coming up. All ready to go. What it's about so the best one? Excited. The best one. I was going to save that to the end, but just a little bit of a, a tease. There won't be another Camelot. Not another Camelot. Camelot. So obviously people are excited. It also means that um, if anybody uh, overseas wants to be on the show, we can just plug you straight in. We've got a dedicated channel for that. Like uh, we, we can start interviewing celebrity guests mm-hmm. if need be. So if anybody knows any celebrities... Hook us up. For example, I do Scar Joe a go go. Imagine if um, Scarlett came on the podcast. Like, what do you think she would say? Keep talking. Maybe something like that? No. This is amazing. What are you doing to me? I think she, I think she might be on the You're other You're abusing your power. Might be on the other Oh my god, I can't take it. I want you to find me. We're going to put that one on hold uh, for later. Anyway, it's, it's really great. The mixing desk is just absolutely perfect. Um, so, welcome. To a new era. A new era. Of which very professional. Yeah, and honestly, all our uh, Patreon subscribers did contribute to this. So if you want you us made to, this possible. If you want us to stop doing it, then it's you know, it's it's on you really. Yeah. Surprise, motherfucker. It's uh <laughs> this is this is your fault, basically, is what we're saying. <laughs> well, we probably will um get tired of this at some point, uh, even this episode, and you and you won't be hearing it uh too much, but uh, uh, up until then. Yabba, come on! <laughs> I just gotta, I just gotta press these buttons because uh, <laughs> uh, it's uh, it's very exciting. Yeah, so once we get tired of our new toy, I'm sure it will be uh, back to business as normal. 
Yes. yes. And uh, the, the hard-hitting, um, finger-on-the-pulse pop culture news that mm. you've uh, come to expect. And uh, speaking of which, we've got quite a show uh, lined up today. We're going to be reviewing, uh, doing some capture reviews of some of the big Oscar noms. Mm-hmm. So uh, we're going to have a look at Manchester by the Sea, Moonlight, Lion. Mm-hmm. And um, you also saw a film about a hobo and a cat. We'll talk yeah. about that as well. <laughs> yes, I did. Uh, there's a trailer <laughs> which features our very own uh, Sam Worthington. Yeah, only one trailer this week because it is so meaty that we couldn't possibly talk about any others. It's a meal on itself. It is. On uh, itself? You don't, by by itself. itself? You don't need any uh, sides with that one. No. It's like um, sitting down to, meat uh, and your potatoes. to a beautiful steak, uh, a Wertho trailer. That was the most magnificent, wonderful, beautiful piece of steak I've ever eaten. And it was so tender. So, I love that one. So that, that's a, that's a little a little bit of a uh, little bit of a, a, a preview of what's uh, coming up there. And um, there was even some news. Now we talked last week, I believe, uh, about the fact that um, Trump is just present absolutely everywhere at the moment. And, and of course, we're a pop culture podcast. We we don't want to get dwell too much on politics, but. Hmm. Uh, Sometimes something happens, uh, especially when it involves Australia, mm. that I feel like we'd be remiss not to talk about, yes. seen as how we are pretty much official spokesblokes for our mm. golden brown country. G- golden brown, nicely, nicely toasted. Yeah, Like a bit of country split. Like uh, a... Yeah. Oh, Mum, give us a bit of that <laughs> like buttercup country, country split. split. We've been going for less than 10 minutes. We've used that one three times. Yeah, well, it, it's, a, it's, a, it's a good <laughs> one. So um, if you'll allow us, let's talk uh, for a second about Donald Trump. Together, Grimace, we could own this town. I think that's our official mm. segment music for talking about I, uh, yeah, Donald I Trump. I think that is fine. And yes, he is uh, he's definitely trying to own the town and he's trying to flex his muscles over our wide brown land. Yeah. Now, I'm unhappy about this because Australia and America, historically, mm. great mates. Good old chums. We have uh, allied with them in every silly war that they've gone off to fight. Every time America's like, oh, you know, we gotta, we got to act tough. we got to go and invade some random country because of something else. Uh, Oil, usually. Yeah. Australia always says, all right, mate. Mm. When someone says, where the bloody hell are you? We, we say, right we here, mate. We got your back. And we send some uh, prime diggers over there mm. who shed blood uh, for whatever crazy American cause. And I've, you know, they've teased America a lot on shows like Book Was Better and stuff. But look, little did I know what was about, mm. about to happen. Mm. This has just become crazier than any of us could have imagined. So Donald Trump uh, spoke to our Prime Minister, Malcolm Turnbull. Turnbull. Not Trumbull, no. as uh, Sean Spicer said. So, <laughs> first bit of disrespect there. They don't even know his name, mm. which is uh, pretty rough. Uh, I, I guess Americans don't know a lot about Australian uh, politics, which is why uh, we were asked on our uh, Facebook page whether Turnbull was a rad dude. Mm, not really. Nope. No, no. The I mean, the thing with Turnbull was, like, he took over... Um, and prior to taking over as Prime Minister, he had kind of been a bit, oh, you know, marri- maybe marriage equality is not, like, the worst thing ever. That could be cool. And then he became Prime Minister, and everyone was like, oh, Mal, remember how you said that thing? And he's like, I have no memory of this. What are you talking about? And so he pretty much towed the party line, did all the awful marriage equality stuff, awful refugee stuff, and it's just an awful dude. When before, he was, like, a less awful dude. Oh, I didn't vote for him. No. I know you, well, I know well, you be, didn't. Because you vote for parties, not people, Luke. That's right. I vote we have a party right now. It's all right. Um, so, yeah, so Trump uh, has a phone call with Malcolm Turnbull. Turnbull. He's, I don't know his name either. Has, he, has his Old mate first Trumbo. Trumbo, I call yeah. him. Uh, remember when Brian Cranston played him in that film? Mm, Bloody it was really good. great performance. Mm, Nailed mm. the accent. So uh, Trump um, ha- calls him up yep. and starts to be a belligerent bugger Yeah, to he him. probably called him in like, the middle of the night because, like, fuck time zones, am I right? Yeah, and yeah. he's like, you know, no, nah, you get up because I'm in America and, mm. and just blasted the guy. Mm. Said it was the worst call ever, apparently. Yeah. Hung up on him. And um, said that this a refugee deal that we had, went onto Twitter, said that it was dumb. Mm. Now, I'm not saying it's not dumb. Mm. 
it, Australia doesn't look after refugees and no, immigrants particularly well. No, we well. don't. No, we, we look after them to the point where they want to set themselves on fire. So we're not yeah. doing a very good job. So it probably is done, mm. but that's not the point. Mm. Like, you don't sell out your mates yeah. on Twitter. Yeah, it's like, you can talk shit about your mates, but if someone else talks yeah. shit about your mates, nah, it's yeah. on. You call me a dickhead, Yeah, that's fine. Yeah. But uh, you get on Twitter mm. and call me a dickhead behind my back, it's probably fine yeah. as well. <laughs> but yeah, yeah, to be Still, fair. Yeah. what I'm worried about is that this opens up a whole can of beans that we need to put a stop to right now. We've got we to gotta shut down these beans because... If he's able to say that this deal is dumb, mm-hmm. what else can he just say is dumb in the future? Like, what's stopping Donald Trump, the most powerful man in the world mm. right now, from getting on Twitter and saying, oh, I think kangaroos are dumb. I think cricket's dumb. How I, dare you, Donald I Trump? I think uh, Chico Roll, that's really dumb and <gasps> stupid and a terrible thing. God. Well, you know what I mean? Yeah, I mean, the only reason we wouldn't be an ally in uh, war with them is if we were at war against them. Yeah, so... Yeah, so what's... and they're driving us to that. Donald, what are you doing? What's stopping him from just going, why not call it a dumberoo and just <gasps> saying that on Twitter? Oh, because it's got a pouch? What is it, a fanny pack? A Something dim sim, like... more like a dumb sim. Yeah. Mm. So we got to draw a line yep. in the sand. So I think... Um, we should stop uh, sending anything over to America. Like, no diggers. Mm, no Hemsworths. No Hemsworths. We'll bring our Hemsworths. All bring the Bring our boys home. Let's see how Westworld and Avengers and mm. bloody... Um, well, they'll just fucking come over here and film in Queensland like everyone else. Yeah. Well, no, no that. No filming in Queensland. We'll close our borders only to Americans. So, yeah. Let's... I mean, Thor 3 would still be fine because it's like Taika Waititi, Chris Hemsworth well, that's and Tom okay. Hiddleston. So, like, they're all fine. They're not Americans. Mm. But we should... We should should uh, put on a boycott to uh, American things, and certainly our great Australian things that go over there, mm. like um, you know, koala stuffed koala toys. Yep, yeah, um, kangaroo scrotum bottle openers. Yes, yes, yeah, none of those. No, think about that, no. POTUS, Next time you're trying to open up a beer. Yeah, I mean, probably the reason that Trump is such a shit about Australia, he probably has never had a Tim Tam. No, that's right. No, because I mean, if you've had a Tim Tam, then what the fuck are you doing? Tim Tams, not tantrums. That's our yeah. our motto. So um, yeah, it's on our coat of arms. Part of the resistance, the Oz resistance, uh, not happy about that. Lift your game. I know we've got a lot of American uh, listeners over there. If there's anything you can do mm. about it, um, if you can have a word to anyone, that would be great. But yes. and don't be misinformed. Don't think that Ma- Malcolm Turnbull is cool. Because I heard that he's, there was there was like some people dude. thinking that like oh you know he's kind of cool for standing up to tr- no he's not he's not cool but he doesn't <laughs> deserve to be called Trumbo no Trumble Trumble by, Trumble or Trumbo or Trombone or Trombone by some bloody American dumb. <laughs> yeah, I don't know if that one was earned. You don't think that was No, earned? I don't think that one was earned. You, don't, you didn't like that is one? There, is there like a reverse reverse one? No. Yabba, come on. Okay, Diego. All right, there Fine. we go. You know my favourite bit in Force Awakens is when like Finn wants water and he runs up and he's yeah. like, water, water, and the, the aliens go. <laughs> 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 I love nice. that. That's nice. so good. <laughs> anyway, uh, in closing, America. America, you look like you need a holiday, a fair dinkum holiday. We all need a fair dinkum holiday. And if you want a fair dinkum holiday, pull up your fucking socks, is what I've got to say. (laughs) Anyway, um, pop culture news. Mm. Tell me about this Doctor Who thing. Well, uh, Capaldi's leaving. So, Doctor Who is a more apt question than Mm. ever. Doctor Who's going to be next. Uh, Who is going to get in that TARDIS? Yeah, so Capaldi's only been the Doctor for what, like, two seasons or something like it doesn't seem very long i don't know i stopped watching when he when he started i watched the first couple of episodes and then there was a preview for one that was like a robin hood themed episode and i went i can't do this anymore did he wear tights i don't know i didn't watch it did he have a feather in his cap i don't know and uh yeah so i haven't watched it for a couple of years uh and i admit that i kind of was a bit relieved when i found this out i think like moffat might be stepping down a showrunner too which is a pretty good thing now the fans don't like moffat do they no no and i mean like I know that Russell T Davies has his, you know, issues and things that people didn't like, but there was just much more kind of 
I don't know, love and whimsy to to the shows that were that seasons that he was in charge of, as opposed to Moffat just being so up his own ass. It's the same. It's the problem with Sherlock. Like he's, it's just oh Moffat. Moffat is the uh, connecting thing here, and the show will be much better just having a bit of a refresh, a bit of a reboot. New Doctor, new showrunner, and I'm sure it will get uh, get back on board a lot of those fans that really lost the love during the last couple of seasons. All I know about Moffat is he's a man that had his pubic hair grafted to his skull. Mm. Yeah, is, it was uh, a revolutionary surgery. Something yeah. that uh, perhaps tr- maybe Trump did do that. Mm. I don't know. That's a mystery. Silky soft. Very uh, silky long blonde yeah pubic hair mm. on Donald. Yeah, so obviously all the speculation now is going to be who's Doctor Who who's now? Who's Doctor Who? That's the question. Yeah. And um, well, we certainly have to lean towards other cultures for entertainment now. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm My little bit against Trump is I'm boycotting Riverdale. I haven't watched an episode. No, I haven't. Either. People are talking about it. <laughs> yeah. I haven't watched it. Yeah, okay. Archie? Poor. Mm. That's mm. what I say. I think we're at a time in history now where this is when we need a female Doctor Who. Mm. Like, yeah, I think there was enough of a discussion about it last time that it's kind of, I don't know, put the idea in a lot of people's heads that maybe it would be okay. Um, yeah, I'm I'm all for it. I don't really, I don't care, really. Plus, they, they can't do, like, some sort of young Matt Smith tenant kind of style mm. one because they've already done that with Dirk Gently, weirdly. Mm. So, uh, put in a female. I yeah. heard, uh, was Tennant said on some talk show that he thought Olivia Coleman. Yes. Who was sitting there at the time. Mm. That uh, would have been awkward if he, he hadn't said her. He looked at the first woman yeah. that was there. Yeah. He was actually thinking, like, about, you know, oh, Megan Fox would be a great Doctor <laughs> Who. And then he saw the stern, sobering gaze of Olivia Coleman. Yeah. And, he, and he said, uh, actually, I think you would make a great Doctor Who if mm. Megan Fox wasn't available. Yeah. Fox. <laughs> what he said but um, yeah I, I think that would be great and I think if you're going to go a guy there's only one I'm going to accept and that is Matt Berry yeah Stephen I, Toast I am absolutely down for that I love love Matt Berry and think he would be a fantastic doctor I think um, I, you know we could all pray that Hayley Atwell's shitty American TV show gets cancelled and she could be the doctor I would love a Hayley Atwell doctor yeah who. imagine there we go I'm suddenly a fan if that yeah. happened I don't mm. think she, that would fit in the TARDIS I don't care how well, much it's bigger, bigger on the inside. In the inside it is. It's bigger on the inside. She's bigger on the inside than um, I thought she was when I first saw Captain America. Mm, okay. Uh, hmm. Anyway, uh, probably <laughs> get off that subject. I can't help. This feels really weird today because. I, I oh, it's because you're fucking looking for ends to put these sound effects I'm in. Not, it's not no. a natural thing. If it doesn't feel natural. No, that's right. not, the podcast not, yeah. does not feel natural today. And it's because I also feel like having the headphones in, I'm really sort of self-conscious, whereas normally it just feels like we're chatting, mm. you know? Yeah. And now I feel like the world is, is listening. Is listening, yeah. Because yeah. they weren't before. No, that's no, right. Sorry. But now, once <laughs> word got out about this... About the uh, soundboard. Mixer. Everybody's curious. Keep talking. All right, I will. I just need that as a little bit of a, a morale boost. Mm. Keep me going. Mm. We can get some Renner on here. What what famous thing does things does uh, Renner say? Is it like? <laughs> <laughs> Don't you think? Yeah, yeah. What, what's Remus, R- Renner famous for? Remember that time on the red carpet when uh, they they asked him like about his views on on life, and he said. <laughs> Anyway. <laughs> You're so mean. True. Uh, you, you tell us what sounds you want to hear. We'll, we'll put them in. Uh-huh. That, that's pretty much the show now. It's like <laughs> you pick some sounds. Um, but you're and too we'll lazy. work our show around. Yeah, you're too lazy yeah. to Google yourself. Yeah. And then um, we'll play them on the show for you. It's yeah. the uh, soundboard request line yes. from now on. Yes, on the, uh, the, the iPad, sound pad thing, there is a disconcerting pink strip of scarlet that uh you don't like scarlet's pink strip no i don't, I don't know i can probably Down do there. i can do without scarlet's pink strip to be honest well hmm. that's where we differ anyway so uh good game 
Tell us about this. Yeah, so I think we kind of mentioned Good Game a little bit last year when we went to Supernova and uh, saw Barjo and Hex from the show. It's a... Not mythical creatures, no, if you're listening from America. They, What's a Barjo and a Hex? Well, they're on a... Good Game is a TV show. Sounds like witchcraft. Video game TV show. Uh, it's a weekly show that is on network television. Yeah, it's been going for like 10 years. It's really popular. Um, they have the main show, which is kind of a sort of adulty focus. They have a Spawn Point, which is a kid's show. And I think they also have like Pocket Game, which is an online one as well. And during the week, it was revealed that the show has been cancelled. And everyone was like... What? Outrage. Yeah, absolute outrage. Cheers. Uh, Crying in the street. Absolutely. People were doing, like, hashtag put out your controllers for good game. Yeah, and... and My PS4 is on the verge, <laughs> if anybody wants it. It, um, yeah, it came as a big shock, because it's a very popular show, and it would I wouldn't be surprised if it's one of ABC's most popular shows, to be fair. Yeah, but they haven't cancelled it just out of the blue. Mm. There, there is a reason here. Yeah, so they made the announcement that two of the uh, hosts had decided not to continue with the show uh, after they came back from summer break and it no. turned out to be uh not barjo i was gonna say because my impression is there's only two hosts except for spawn point there's a robot and if that robot has quit uh, that annoys me yeah because he should have been programmed better well there's there's two main hosts but there are some kind of secondary hosts that kind of fill in and do segments and, and bits and pieces so um, Hex has left, the, the female host, and uh, I think it was Nick Boy, one of the other guys, has left as well, but he doesn't really matter too much, to be fair. Oh, so not even, like, I thought you were going to say Goose. No, not Goose. Goose is hanging around. Maverick? No. No, Iceman. Iceman's still there. Iceman's yes, there. Yes, yes. So, yeah, basically it's just Hex and Nick Boy who have left, and instead of uh, recasting or using someone like Goose to just fill in uh, with Barjo until they find somebody else. Oh, Maybe Goose and Barjo. Boys will be boys. Can I you imagine? I know. I know. Uh, lads. Lads cast. <laughs> lads getting together. Uh, they just decided to can the whole thing. They B- just went, no. Boob physics. Fuck yeah. That's all they talk about. You know they, they're they not those t- sort of no, boys. they're, they're not. lovely boys. They're lovely, mature boys they are. who uh, like a bit of a laugh, like a bit of a game, and um, certainly are not like Gamergate types at Absolutely all. not. No. Very, very good. So it's, it's a huge shame. Like, I know that a part of ABC was saying, well, you know, there's a lot of... Um, you get a lot of this information online now anyway, so what does it really matter? But it does matter. Like, I, I'm i not going to go and watch a half an hour video of some idiot reviewing, like, Call of Duty 3, but I'll happily watch Hex and Barjo talk about it for five minutes. Well, they minutes. had class. They did have class. They had nice chemistry, and they were fun and banter and, and that sort of thing, and you're watching it for them, not so yeah. much for the games. Like, I don't really care about video games that much, but I love good game. Well, ABC has said, you know, people, yeah, consume information about video games differently. Yeah. I disagree. I think if they were just too lazy to find someone, I think we would have been happy to do it. Hmm. I think, like, <laughs> um, Miss Pac-Man, that's a good game. Sure. Cuba, good game. Yeah, I've played some good games on my phone over the last couple of weeks. That's this, about all the gaming I've done. This is my audition, by the way. Okay. I'm, I'm being serious here. Um, Halo 3, good game. Yeah. You, like, probably couldn't do a full season, because I don't like know that many good games, <laughs> but that's three I've just yeah. listed off the top of my head. I reckon in a... How long are the episodes? 20 minutes? Uh, yeah, about 20 an hour? minutes, yeah. I could list six or seven good games. Okay. I'd yeah. have to prepare. I'm not going to do it now on the spot. I, yeah, gave, you, I, mean, I gave you three now. Yeah, I, feel I mean, you like, don't have to fill the whole 20 minutes yourself. You do have a co-host. That's true. Mm. And, I, and I feel like, you know, if you like those three and, and you think that I'd be good in that spot, then, you know, maybe pay for the other four than me just say them for free mm-hmm. now, mm. you know? Well, it doesn't matter now. The show's gone forever. And Fable 2. And <laughs> that's a good game. <laughs> and um, the ABC doesn't care about you or your games. Yeah. I, think, I think they are keeping um, Spawn Point and they're going to, do it online or something like that, but uh, it'll just be the robot. It'll just be the robot, yeah. And Barjo kind of looking sad. I'd like to get Barjo on the show if we could. Yeah, well, he's got a TV show coming out this year. Um, I can't remember what it's called off the top of my head, but he left Good Game for a little while, and I think Goose filled in for him anyway. Um, so they could go and film it. So maybe, maybe we could try and get him on. World's gone insane. Mm, it has. Speaking turvy, fucking 2017. What is this? Speaking of which. There's this trailer. Yeah. Let's talk about trailers. Mm. We saw a trailer for the new Wertho joint. 
Yeah, which I had not heard of. I don't even know how I stumbled across this trailer. I have no idea when it's coming out. I have I th- no idea anything about it. Wasn't your Wertho Google alert? Oh, probably. Probably, probably. was Probably. I woke up in the morning, the Wertho Google alert had delivered me this trailer. Now, I've watched this trailer and there's mm. only a couple of things I can figure out from it. One, were those in it? Yep. Two, it was based on a book. Yes. I really don't know what else is happening in that trailer. Yeah. The first trailer that I watched, the one that I sent to you, is so much funnier. It's not meant to be funny. It's not a comedy. It's a very sad, serious movie. It's a drama. It's a very serious thing. Did you say it's about faith? It is. It's based on a Christian novel. Crikey. Yeah. The Bible. Uh, no, the other one. They've got a new one. Yeah, the I know. The New Testament. Crazy. No, the, the, the New New Testament. There's a third mm. book. Yeah, I know, I know. It's that. just like they just keep pumping this shit out. God, sequels. Do, do we need them? No. Um, well, I'd like a Jesus prequel. It's 30 years there. Mm. 33 years? There's a good number of years there to fill mm. in. Who's we, writing those stories? We should get George Lucas to do it. He's great at that. He's so good. What? I want to know where Jesus came from. I want to know how he got his beard. How many mitochlorians has he got? Like, they're like off the, over 5,000, yeah. Over 9,000, yeah. probably. That's a reference to some things that the um, kids like. Yeah. Yeah. Youth. <laughs> uh, <laughs> kids. Um, so the, the first trailer that I saw, it has this, like, this overly fucking earnest, like, Tim McGraw and Faith Hill duet over the top of it. And it just, oh, I was just cracking up laughing watching this trailer because it was just so, like, oh, Jesus. And I'm just like, ah, oh, what is it? What is this? What is this? And then we watched the other one today, and it's this, like, three-minute-long trailer where you actually get some of the storyline. So he's got a little girl. Yes. And she goes missing. Yes. Probably because he was watching old cricket tapes on the couch yeah, for and days and days. And he wasn't, like, thinking about Jesus and God enough. No. And so his little girl... Like, uh, people probably said to him, like, rang him up and said, Hey, mate, um, want to go go hang out and think and talk about Jesus and God and stuff? Mm, and, he's and he went, like, no, nah, I want to go fishing. No, nah, mate, I want to fishing. Oh, um, you know that, like, Jesus, they went fishing sometimes, you know, yeah. and the Jesus symbol is a fish. Yep. And he's like, don't have time for it, mate. No. It hangs up. Yep. So... And That's then, got to change. Yeah, and then his daughter is uh, killed, which is very sad, but, I mean, really, it's his own fault. Yeah. Yeah. How uh, was she killed? I don't know. They e- don't... Eaten by a fish, I think. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. One of those really big, like, wop, wop, wop he, ones. He's, like, casting into the water, and he yeah. accidentally hooks her, and she's very little and light, and he's, yeah. he's very strong. <laughs> yeah. Not in the legs, which is why he was in a wheelchair in Avatar, but yeah. his upper body is <laughs> just beyond so, compare. So strong. So muscular. Mm. It's like an inverted triangle. He is. He is. Good Lord. Uh, and so he gets all sad and smashes up some things. This is that's, oh, that's what you do. I was going to say this is were though sad, where yeah. you know he's just internalising it. Mm-hmm. But he, do, you're right. He shows some emotion which I've never seen before. Yeah, but you don't actually see his face during those bits. So I do wonder if he has an emotional stunt double, like a double to come in and play the emotions yeah. for him. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I wouldn't be surprised. And then he like goes to um, a house and there's like, what's her name, Octavia Spencer? Yes. Is that lady? And I think maybe she's God or something. And then... A black woman is God. I like where this is going. Yeah, and then and then he meets some other people and then they watch some like plants grow or something and then he walks on water, just like Jesus. Yeah. And some things happen that probably because God is good and he, God makes them good. Something. Yeah, like his daughter sends him a letter saying, oh, hey, Dad, come and meet me. I'll be in the shack tomorrow. He's like, that's weird. I thought she was dead. Mm. But then it's some sort of, like, heavenly thing. It's a heavenly shack. I think it's a love shack. Mm. I think that's what the B-52s were trying to get across. Yeah. And I think that... Obviously, it took us this long to catch up. And it maybe was, though, unlocked the key for us. Yeah, and the mm. key to his heart, maybe. Yeah, yeah Because maybe. Um, we're going to be talking about Wertho a lot later. For Patreon subscribers, we are going to do a Wertho a Go-Go mm. episode, which we're going to record later today, uh, about another uh, one of his films. And we're mm. going to look at one it One of his in, great, in great films. And, and something that came up there, and it may be worth just sort of teasing out to the, the wider audience, audience is he doesn't have a lot of emotion no now this is a guy i think he was was he nida trained i think he might have oh, national NIDA. institute of dramatic arts he was either nida or whopper but i think he was nida yeah. yeah 
Uh, and I think um, he's a bit of a, re- a revolutionary actor because this mm. is someone that sort of studies theatre and he, he looks at the masks. Mm. He looks at the comedy mask. Yeah. He, he looks at the tragedy mask. Mm. And goes, these are the only two options. You know, one's a big smile. Yep. One's a big frown. No, I, I think he's like, he's like, well, well, why have two masks? Yeah. Why not just combine them into one? Yeah. Which, yeah. I you mean, know, it's, it's efficient, isn't it? it? And it becomes a straight line. Yes. <laughs> yeah. and, he, and, he's he's like, and he's like... That little emoji with the straight line. He's now. like that little girl in the, the soft taco ad who's like, why can't we have both? Yes. And he, he sort of, instead of like... Because basically, and a lot of older women in Hollywood would be able to tell you this if they weren't invisible, <laughs> when you do a lot of expressions, you start you start looking pretty Oh, your pretty eyes rough. start crinkling you up. You get a bit of a rough, feet. A rough yeah, head. Yeah, okay. A rude head, as they <laughs> say around these parts. Mm-hmm. So he doesn't want a rude head. He's nah, a beautiful man. He is a beautiful man. And, and he's just able to to take the smiles, the frowns, and put them all into just a straight face. Yep. And so no matter what's happening to him, um, and it's in his eyes, really. Mm. And your eyes... Are the window to your soul. And they don't wrinkle. No, you are absolutely right. Yeah. They don't age. Um, people might be surprised at this. Like, you see a kitten or something and you're like, oh, he's so cute. Look at his big eyes. Yeah. It's because your eyes are the same mm. all the time. It's just the head's little mm-hmm. and then the head gets bigger. Mm-hmm. So when you look at, like, um, in a lot of women, like, when they get the, what is it, a sonogram? When mm-hmm. they get to see their babies for the first time, are kind of really freaked out because in those early stages, it looks like that little paperclip, Microsoft paperclip. That, <laughs> that, that what helps can you. I help you with? Yeah, yeah, because the eyes are already full adult size, mm. but the body's just a little curly thick. Yeah, they're so quickly freaky. rushing to the screen and pressing the X to get rid of it yeah. because that freaks out the mother. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, right. um, they look like little cookie monsters, but without <laughs> but without the body. Very frightening. They go, can you, like, take those little googly eyes off the screen? That's very unprofessional. Like, yeah. no, that's your baby. That's and your like, baby. <gasps> that's his adult eyes. That Like, when he's an old man and dying in bed, that mm. they're the same eyes that are going to be looking back at you because they just don't change. And um, there you go. That's the uh, Wertho School of Acting. Great trailer. Great movie. I can't That wait. was the most magnificent, wonderful, beaut piece of steak I've ever eaten. And it was so, so tender. tender. Just the most tender. I imagine there'll be a lot of tender moments uh, in The Shack. Yes. Yeah. And, uh, look, serve me up a big plate at The Shack. Yeah. Are we going to... We probably will end up seeing The Shack at some point. Oh, ab- like, it's got Sam Worthington in it. Of course <sighs> we're going to watch it. We might learn some lessons. We might open our heart to Jesus. Anyway, let's review some movies. Movies. I used to edit all those in, and yeah, now I can do it on we the fly. Can do them live. Thanks to this. See, that was Fantastic. about that was like the one actual necessary sound grab we've had this whole episode. You're saying the others weren't necessary. <laughs> That one's not bad. That's pretty good. <laughs> All right. What well, a new era, new dawn. Now, we looked at the biggest movies that everybody's talking about. Mm. You know, look, they didn't um, light up the box office, but my God, are they going to get some little gold statues of naked men at the Academy Awards? I mean, Best Picture nominees. We'd already, we've already talked about La La Land. We've already yes. talked about Arrival. Mm-hmm. But what about Manchester by the Sea? What about Moonlight? Mm. What about Lion? Mm. What about um, Hidden Figures? Yes. Hey, you exactly. know? Exactly. What about those movies? You know? Well, we've only just got them here. That's right. So that's why we're only just talking about them now. So we're talking about them and um, we're going to do some capsule reviews of those films because... Yeah, only little little ones. Just little mini ones that would fit in like a capsule machine. Mm. Great news Like is, a little Gashapon movie. Gashapon reviews, but you're not going to have to put in a dollar or two. That's right. You're going to get them for for free. Yeah. It's such a bargain. Such a bargain. And this will give you an idea as well if any of these films, because you're probably overwhelmed. You're looking at the best picture list and you're mm. like, so many pictures. Mm. Um, but which one is the best best Which one? one? Yeah. I don't have time to, to look at all these pictures. Well, we'll tell you about them. You decide which, because you're in a democracy. You might not think that at the moment, but you are in a democracy and you can choose which pictures 
um, you want to look at, mm. at least for an extended period of time. I mean, someone could flash up a picture and then you, you would see it. Yeah, but you could yeah. Turn, and I mean, you can turn your eyes away. You know, at the moment, while you do have a choice, while you have the while right, while you have the choice, just take advantage of that choice because you don't know how long it is before um, the only movie screening in the cinema will be of uh, Glorious Leader Trump. Or, like, it'll be, like, John Wayne movies or something. Oh, yeah. You know? And that'll yeah, it'll be just it. be that new Mark Wahlberg Patriots Day over and over, over again. again. Yeah. Yeah. Mark Wahlberg in every movie. <laughs> oh, yeah. No women. Yeah. Women will lose the, an executive order. Women will not have the right yeah. to yeah. A, a appear on Kevin a Sorbo screen. will just be in every movie now. His career will just be revitalised. Utopia or dystopia, mm. you decide. It's the choice is yours. America. Mm. Manchester by the Sea. That's a movie. That's a thing. Mm. Casey Affleck. Yeah, who has allegedly done some not good things. Yeah. Which people are not very interested in uh, kind of talking about because he's got a famous big brother. Famous big brother called uh, Ben Affleck. Batman Affleck. Who is Batman. Mm. And uh, you say a bad thing about Casey Affleck. Uh, I bet you, you'll be laying in bed, there'll be a, a light in the sky, you'll be like, what's that? I can't sleep. And you'll go to turn to close the curtains, mm. and there'll be a big bat symbol, and that basically means you are fucked. Yep. You are marked for death. Well, not death, but he'll, he might brand you, and then you go to prison, and then mm. everyone kills you there, because they're like, did you say something bad about Casey Affleck? <laughs> because if there's one thing <laughs> prisoners don't like, yep. um, child molesters, mm -hmm. uh, mass murderers, mm -hmm. and people that say bad things about uh, Boston's own Casey, Casey Affleck. Affleck. Yeah, exactly. How do you like them apples? Not one bit. I don't have a how do you like those apples. Oh, we need to get that one. Button. Well, we'll be able to have that for a couple of weeks when we do uh, the new Matt Damon movie. We'll need it then. That's true. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, Manchester by the Sea. I have not caught that one, so this one all on you. Oh, right. I was just hoping you were going to explain it. That's why I was talking so much shit. Oh, all no. right. I've, 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 I haven't seen you Manchester haven't seen by one. the Sea. <laughs> okay. So we should have started with Moonlight. We probably should have, yeah. All right. Well, Manchester by the Sea, Ben Affleck, Casey Affleck. <laughs> Um, They're pretty much interchangeable. His brother dies, and he has to. He's been granted custody of his teenage son, mm. and doesn't really want it. He's got some dark stuff in his past. Um, it goes back and forward in time a little bit, and it's a uh, well acted, uh, accomplished drama. I can understand why people like it. I can understand why it's in the best picture category. It's uh, directed by Kenneth Lonergan. I believe that's the correct way of saying it. I'm not looking anything up because the iPad is uh, fully dedicated yeah, to come on. Uh, yeah. these buttons. Mm -hmm. But um, he did the film Margaret, which not a lot of people have heard about. It was made quite a few years ago, and I believe that it wasn't released due to a lawsuit and legal thing hang-ups about the director's cut. He mm -hmm. wanted final cut on it. The studio wanted to change it. It's quite a long movie. And as such, it didn't get released for quite a lot of time. And then when it finally did, it, it people didn't really see it. Um, it stars Anna Paquin. And I watched that for the first time last year. And I, I do think it's the superior film. Mm -hmm. I also think that um, it made me almost a bit over-familiar with his style. Okay. So Because there's something really sort of no... Um, frills about it, which is mm. quite different to, you know, your La La Lands and your Arrival and everything. Like, he's not creating necessarily. Like, it's well shot, it's well photographed, but he's not really playing around with images as mm. much. Like, it, it feels more sort of raw and real, and mm. he's, he's got almost like a... Substance think, over style? No, no, the other way around. Style, yes, no, you're right. Yeah. Yes, yeah, 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 mm. yeah. Yeah, yeah, that's why I said it. Yeah, yep. you're 100% right. Yep. <laughs> uh, so, yes, well done. Yeah, substance. See, I don't get a fucking applause when I say shit like that. Well, you can reach the fucking thing. Press a button. <gasps> Scarlet. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, it didn't engage me as much. Like, I, I'm not going to criticise the filmmaking or the story or anything, but it, it just didn't engage me. And the reason is, to a large degree, that I think I felt manipulated by it. Mm. And, and it's something about these types of films 
where it deals with some quite tragic things and some sad things and it's about loss and it you know those films that ask you to imagine well what if I lost somebody really close to me especially if it was somebody that was you know quite innocent and hmm. uh, and loved of course that's going to be sad mm. You know, it reminds me of when Boy With The Striped Pajamas mm. was a really big book and people sort of came in and said, oh, uh, I just read this and uh, it was so sad. And you're like, yeah, the Holocaust is sad. Like, if you're going to do something about people losing loved ones and stuff, then, yeah, of course it's going to be sad and, of course, you're going to have those emotions. But I didn't really connect with it beyond that. Mm. I didn't find like that there are other movies where I've had more feels and there are other movies where I felt more genuine emotion and even movies that aren't necessarily going for that. Like I found Edge of 17 far more relatable. Like it just took me back to this nostalgic high school thing. And I was kind of like, Oh, this is, you know, this is really interesting. And I was engaged. Whereas I couldn't find the point of entrance Mm. for Manchester by the sea. So it's a very good film. And, um, I can see why it's up there, but uh, it wouldn't if, if we'd seen it last year. Mm. It wouldn't be in my top ten. Okay. Moonlight. Moonlight is one that we both have seen. This one, I was kind of a, a little bit worried that because everyone's been talking about it, saying it's so great and everything. I was worried that the hype was gonna maybe kill it for me a little bit, and I was maybe not going to enjoy it as much as I would have if I'd just seen it, not going knowing anything going into it. But I loved it. I loved it. It's such a beautiful movie and it's so kind of slow burn engaging to the point where you don't realise how in it you are until kind of some stuff happens and you're kind of reacting quite viscerally to it. And um, I've got to stop pulling my fucking earbuds out. Um, and yeah, I really, really, really enjoyed it. So it's a story of a, a young uh, young black man called Chiron. And him sort of through childhood, adolescence, growing up and then, you know, into kind of young adulthood and dealing with issues at home um, and kind of questioning his sexuality and stuff like that. And the child actors are amazing in this. All the kids are fantastic. Uh, And it's just such a nice character, so nicely written. There's just some little bits in there that... I don't, I'm not going to obviously spoil anything, but they're just kind of written in a way that you're sort of like, oh, I'm a little bit surprised that that's how they're going to kind of word that, but it was like really nicely done. I agree. This is my favourite out of these new ones. Mm. It's really well put together. Mm. It's the colour palette is beautiful. Yeah, so visually very cool, performance-wise very great. Um, I just think structurally it's really interesting. I mm. mean, it is three slices of life, almost in the same way that... Um, boy showed you slices of life just like checking in boyhood? on it was it boyhood boyhood, boyhood. Yeah. yeah it it's very it, yeah it definitely has that kind of like yeah black boyhood where boyhood is about a you know little white kid this is very similar yeah yeah so three slices of life it's movie split into three three different actors portraying this um guy and what i really loved about it is that i, I think I probably thought it was going to tackle issues more Mm. and that it was going to try and provide answers or, you know, have that beginning, middle and end. Mm. But really it explores themes rather than, Mm. like, pursues issues. And it's very human. And the things that they choose to show um, aren't even always really big points in this guy's life. Mm. But But they're big to him. Tell you a lot Mm. about him and inform you a lot. And... He's a character that's really quite multifaceted as well. He's not someone that's, um, you know, I, I felt he's almost quite contradictory in times, at times. And you see that way that people, just like they do in real life, react differently around different people mm-hmm. and have different relationships. And you can be this um, really strong alpha with one group of people and be this shy, timid, vulnerable Mm. thing with another group of people. And I don't think that's something that happens a lot in films. I think people write characters like, well, this character's this guy and he Mm. does this and this. And um, this was far more human. And those moments sometimes are very gentle and subtle, but tell you so much mm. and are really engaging. I mean, that third part is almost one scene. Yeah, I think the... I mean, I I loved the whole thing, but I do think the third part was probably my favourite in that there was that kind of transformation. He kind of... 
uh, is one type of character and then he sort of re-meets someone from his past and then just clicks back mm. to how he was when he was a teenager and it's just so like, oh, wow, okay. And beautifully crafted in the mm. sense that you have three people playing this character, one who's a child, but their mannerisms and the, the mm. approach is very consistent. It's very well put together. Mm. So, um, yeah, I, I think that's my pick. Like, if you were going to just pick one of one of this batch, I think Moonlight's the most accomplished. Mm. Um, yeah, I, I, I really, really loved Moonlight a lot, yeah. And the most interesting. Mm. Now, I finally saw Lion. You've reviewed that on the show before. Yes. Um, do you want a really quick recap on what you thought of it for people to remind? Yes, yep. So this is... Uh, Dev Patel, Nicole Kidman, David Wenham, a uh, story about a little, a true story about a little kid um, who was uh, abandoned or got lost. Separated, in, separated from his from brother. His brother uh, in India when he was about six years old. He ends up getting adopted by an Australian family and then as he gets older he decides to uh, try and retrace where he was from to try and find his family, basically. And I enjoyed it. Um, I, again, didn't love it. Uh, it wasn't going to be a top 10 film for me, but I can absolutely see why it's getting the um, love that it has. Mm. Like, Especially when you think about last year, and, and we saw a lot of movies from last year, you know, where was the quality in a lot of... You know, we didn't... Mm. We went through a long patch of year before going, oh, you know, these are movies mm -hmm. that are contenders. Uh, I definitely was more engaged by the child section. Mm -hmm. I think that's a really lovely bit of filmmaking, especially because um, there's not a massive amount of dialogue and uh, it's, it's a really nice sort of journey through this child's eyes and um, a real sense of place. And um, he, he does a, an amazing job. Mm. And then, you know, it... it sort of peters out a little bit for me as it continues but uh, I enjoyed seeing Nicole Kidman and Wenham and as you said on when you looked at it um, Dev Patel does a really fantastic job with the Australian accent mm. and um, you know it's just all it's so Oz it's, that just trio yeah that family yeah absolutely like um, I I love David Wenham and there was one bit in the movie where like he has a very unique sort of almost whistly, nasally kind of voice. And there was one bit in the movie that the whole audience just laughed. And it wasn't he wasn't saying anything funny. It was just the way that he said it. And it was very, very Wenemy and very funny. Again. Look, yeah. as, as an Australian man, it's pretty good. Like, yeah. considering the shit that we're pumping out here. Oh, as an Australian movie, it's fucking amazing. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. No, it's an amazing movie mm. anyway. I, I think it's just... Yeah. Sort of what I was saying before. It's about how willing you are to sort of go along with that and fall into the mm. um oh yes i'm like I'm, I'm crying and a lot of people do cry with this movie and i can absolutely yeah. understand that i didn't mm. um i wasn't able to find that point of reference for me where i could really hook in and, and yeah. feel that i think i mean I, I agree obviously the bit with the kid is um very strong because obviously he's a very small child and you always connect with that a bit more and then obviously as we get into the dev, dev patel section it does start to feel a little bit Detective Google, it's a guy on his computer mm. a lot, and you can, yeah, I can absolutely understand a disconnect at that bit, but, um, yeah, I'm a massive sucker for when movies that are based on real things actually show real footage and stuff for people too. at the end, and that's the thing that gets me, and there's a couple of title cards with sort of extra information yeah. that come up at the end, and those things got me as well, and I understand why people get really upset by that very, very last section, but yeah, I can definitely also understand if, you know kind of struggled with an in for this one as well. I, I just have that... Uh, I agree, and we, we talked about this with Jackie, that idea of if I'm watching something based on a true story, I'm probably going to go and Google it yeah. straight afterwards, and I want to see the real thing. And, and certainly while watching it, I was like, I want to know more about this real guy mm. because it, you know, it's a very interesting story. Mm. Um, and then when you see that footage of him and the family, both the Australian family and the Indian family... I think what really struck me about that, though, was just how constructed the film is, where you're not thinking about that. You're, like, totally within that reality when you're watching mm. the film. And then when you see the real guy compared to, like, Dev ultra Dev handsome... Dev Patel. Dev Patel. Well, to be fair, Dev Patel is the 
one working Indian actor, if you would believe Hollywood, because there's no one else to cast, right? Yeah. Yeah. Even though India has about the biggest film industry mm-hmm. in, in the world. Uh, but, uh, yeah, I you just sort of realise that, oh, you know, in real life these things don't look and feel yeah, like yeah. that. There's well, no, it's not more a nice in, soft, sunny filter over It's more internalised um, anyway. Yeah. So, yeah. But, yeah, look, I, I rate it highly. Hmm. I, I certainly recommend it if that's sort of what you're going for. I think Moonlight, again, for me, is the one that has the most interesting filmmaking. But that said, uh, the director of Lion, who I think has only done one film before that, is mm-hmm. it called The Top of the Lake? Not something I'm particularly mm, familiar sure. with. I definitely think he's somebody to look out for mm. because... Uh, that was the real star of that film for me is just the way it's shot and put together and um, he and the music, just the combination, everything. The, the vision for that film and the way that everything unfolds, like just watching that kid in those wordless parts with mm. that sense of travel and yeah. that um, beautiful music scoring it all, uh, I, I think was well worth it. Mm. So, yeah, it definitely engaged me. It surprises me. I, I would have thought Manchester by the Sea was probably the one that I would um, get into more. But I think uh, be, because of everything that's been happening worldwide, etc., it's really nice to see other stories. And I just didn't care about... I guess I was seeing, like, Casey Affleck as... Casey Affleck, the sexual harasser? No, no, I, I wasn't <laughs> even thinking about that. I was, I was thinking more about Casey Affleck, the guy who's the brother of Ben Affleck and, mm. you know, has money and privilege yeah, and, yeah. oh, he's sad about stuff and he's drinking away his problems mm. and stuff. Isn't and sad to be like, a white man in America? Yeah, look yeah. what I have to deal with. Look at me having to deal with the consequences of stupid things I did. And mm. it's like, well... And then you watch Moonlight, which is innocent people dealing with consequences. It's like, well, I kind of feel like I sympathise a little bit more there. There's just a point where you're sick to death of the same voices. Mm. And I say that fully aware that I I think about that even in terms of this podcast. Like, when I am sort of soapboxing about something, I think, well, who the fuck needs to hear from me like the the only advantage is maybe like being australian is a slightly different perspective Mm. for certainly for people that are in america but then it's like i can't speak for anyone i want to be like open to these things but at the same time like I'm sure the people that are actually affected by most of the issues in the world go, well, who gives a fuck what, <laughs> yeah. what you think about it? Um, which is why it is easier to talk about pop culture and stuff. But, yeah, it's like um, there was an animated movie that I watched, and I didn't mention it on here, uh, Nerdland, mm-hmm. which stars um, Paul Rudd and Patton Oswalt. Oh, yeah, Oswald. yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And, you know, it opens up and it's two white guys and they love porn and they want to be famous script writers and why can't we be famous in Hollywood? And mm. they're, like, doing stuff. And you're just like, I would have probably, this is the sort of movie I would have loved, like, 10, 15 years ago. Mm. And I just was like, oh, no, it's just so gross. Like, I, I'm not into that. And when you look at, like, I used to write plays and stuff like that, I would have written shit like that, mm. you know? That's the sort of stuff that... I probably would have done as well. Like, I wrote about white guys that were obsessed with women and did horrible things Mm. and wanted to be writers and stuff. And you're just like, oh, it's just so fucking gross now. Which is why I don't tell stories, like, anymore. It's because, like, what the fuck have I got to throw in there? So Mm. so, so maybe that's it. Yeah, I mean, the world is changing and people just need to grow with it. That's the thing. Yeah. You know? And if people say, well, maybe we don't want as many white stories and white voices let's have a bit more diversity then you know maybe we won't be having quite as much hashtag oscar so white in the future and it's just also like in terms of interest i mean you look at even something like rogue one force awakens to go right back into that really sort of broad pop culture sphere you know where would you have gone with characters that were just the white hand solo we kind mm. of guy again like how would you start to separate that as being somebody who was you know, if you had that Han Solo type, like giving us the uh, Donnie Yen's character is mm. so much more interesting. Yeah, for sure. Or giving us even like John Boyega, like mm. just as a different sort of voice and face and, and feeling to here are the white guys again doing, you know, because especially in those um, movies that 
are so broad and are so reliant on genre and the sort of DNA of the movie's past, everything becomes really interchangeable if you don't start to get different voices in. So, you know, how many Mark Wahlbergs do we need? I don't even know if we need one. Probably not, but uh, I'm sure once Trump works out cloning, because I'm sure there's some kind of secret uh, bunker where they've got all this crazy science stuff hidden. Once he works out cloning, it'll just be all Mark Wahlberg. Mm. And then if they need a secondary sidekick uh, white person, it'll just be Donnie Wahlberg. Yikes. Yeah. Dark times. I know. Ooh. Look forward to that. All right. Now, did you want to talk about this last one or, or... Yes. Yes. So we've been watching a lot of movies that are like about people having a bad time and being sad and dealing with issues. And I thought, you know what? I want to watch a movie about a cat. And a hobo. Well, and a hobo. Don't hobos have issues? Well, they do. Yes, yes. He Well, there was definitely some issues. So uh, there was a screening this morning of a movie called A Street Cat Named Bob. Surprisingly not nominated for Best Picture. Well, I don't think it came out in the window. In Didn't the, come out in, the in period. time. I don't think it came out in time. So maybe, maybe next year for the Oscars. Uh, it's a true story of a guy called James Bowen who uh, was a homeless fella in... London, yeah, London, and he had a cat named Bob, which is why the movie's called A Street Cat Named Bob. This is sort of like a modern day uh, Dick Whittington, Puss in Boots kind of uh, <laughs> story. But, sure, yeah. Did the cat wear boots? Uh, no, but he wore a scarf. Okay. Yeah, he had a scarf. So, uh, yeah, sort of a, a guy, he's homeless, he has like addiction issues, he's on like the methadone program. His caseworker is uh, Anna from Downton Abbey. I thought you is... said diction issues, which uh, suggests that you uh, have diction. diction issues. No, maybe you just have listening issues. I've only got one earbud. Yeah, well, so do I, and I can still fucking hear. I thought anyway. you said earbud. That's a good film with an animal in it. You're an idiot. Okay. Um,. So, yes, yeah, so he kind of gets some, gets some, like, emergency housing so he's not homeless anymore, and then this cat just randomly rocks up, and he takes the cat with him busking, and he works out that he gets, like, shitloads more money because people come over and see the cat and then give him some money. Uh, then he's selling the big issue with the cat and getting money and all sorts of stuff. And it's just a fairly pleasant movie. Like, nothing that bad happens in the movie. It's just kind of a guy hanging out with his cat and i feel like in these times in this shit fire of a world sometimes you just want a movie where a guy hangs out with a cat who plays the guy i don't know a white blonde man who voices the cat no one voices the cat but the best thing is that the bob the cat in the movie is played by the actual bob the cat so you can rest assured that nothing awful happens to bob the cat at the end of the movie because he's still alive and playing no, himself in the movie no milo we're noticing here absolutely oh, well, that is, not that is a relief mm. is there there's not even like a fantasy sequence where the guy's like mething out and then the cat talks to him and wears boots and like no sadly. takes him on a wild ride so just a guy hanging out it's just a guy hanging out with a cat with a cat yeah, and it was only um, uh, the book that it's based on came out in like 2012 or something. So, yeah, the, the guy's still fine. The cat's still fine. Everyone's fine. Everything turned out fine. Isn't that nice? Isn't sounds, that nice when a movie does that? Sounds like it was shot on an iPhone all in one take. No, it wasn't. I can't imagine how much of a pain in the ass it would have been working with that cat. Because, like, it's not a professional acting cat or anything. No. And looking at its body language, like, it's pretty pissed off in a lot of scenes. It's tail swishing and big pupils and stuff. It's not very happy. So I can only imagine that cat would have been really pissy for most of that movie. Yeah, they must have been pretty keen on authenticity because you'd think otherwise you would just get a Hollywood cat like Garfield who's yeah, exactly. got a, a lot of experience yeah. and, and could just do that. Mm. I mean, you might need a bigger scarf because he, it's quite... He's got a very quite wide a neck. thick yeah. neck. Yeah. And really big boots because his feet are huge. Mm. Don't get me started. Unnaturally large for a cat. I don't like that at all. All right, yeah. I didn't want to see it because, um, yeah, I'm just not a fan of the homeless. I, I'll watch a Garfield, I'll watch a uh, Puss in Boots. I like when he does uh -huh. the sad eyes. Yeah. I like that. But um, if it's someone begging for money doing the sad, sad eyes mm. on the street while I'm just trying to enjoy coffee, no thanks. So inclusive of you. I like Oscar the Grouch. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. 
He's not that grouchy once you get to know him. Okay. He's got a heart of gold. You just have to get in the bin with him and understand his uh, his life? His bin is bigger on the inside. It's oh. like a TARDIS. He's got an elephant in there. Really? Sometimes the trunk like, pokes out and he like goes, Oh, get out of the swimming pool or something oh. like that. And you're like, oh. Wow. There's a party happening Amazing. In if only we had an elephant sound effect. I, there was a, I think I was put <laughs> off because of um, that movie Cardboard Boxer with um, Sandman in it. Thomas Hayden Church. Thomas Hayden Church. Yeah. That's right. And he was a cardboard boxer. So it was sort of like about bum fights and stuff. Yeah. And, uh, and I'm not a fan of that. They fight with their bums. They fight with their bums. Yeah. Um, but which are, they're quite hungry bums. <laughs> okay. Because they don't get a lot of food. Uh-huh. But as I said, like, look, I'll even watch the Heath, Heathcliff cartoon, you know, if, uh-huh. if Garfield's not available. Yeah. But, um, yeah. It, was it a play on a streetcar named Desire? Is that, like, mentioned in the film? No. No. No, he's just a cat from the street, and his name is Bob. There's not a girl in there called Stella or anything? No, there's a girl. There's a girl in there. There is a girl in there. I I do like girls. Yes, yeah, and it's like whenever you you think that, you know, this is based on a true story and kind of the sort of socioeconomic area that this is based in, and I'm like sitting there thinking, I bet the real girl's not as pretty as that girl in the movie. Yeah, I though bet she that. may have been very pretty to him, uh, I imagine there was far less teeth involved. I bet the guy is not that good looking in the. Oh no, 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 no! They they showed him at the end, and he is perfectly pleasant looking. He is... yeah, he just looks like like with today's standards, just a normal kind of hipstery looking sort of guy. So he could be on the cover of the big issue. He could be as a success story, as like a cover model. Mm. He could be on page three. Uh, maybe the, with his pussy on the, page three. Of the Hungry Bum Gazette. <laughs> oh. I'm just kidding. Oh. Yeah, well, come on. Oh, come on. No, I'm, I'm kidding. Mm. I'm obviously... It's like, mm-hmm. it's, it's a bit of a, a ironic piss take on privilege. I do. Oh, is it satire? It's like satire. those guys it's doing satirical. the he will not divide us. Is it that kind <laughs> oh, of satire? Oh, Christ, no. <laughs> okay, I'm bailing out of that one. Yeah. Um, okay, well, I might give that a look because... Um, mm. I lied about it, all that stuff, and I actually really want to see it. Mm. Sounds Ooh. like a tender piece of steak. <laughs> <laughs> Let's not play that one again. Okay. Uh, yeah, so that's that's well, it. That's it. I think. That's your lot. Yeah. That's your serving today. But, of course, if you're a Patreon subscriber, then uh, there's some Word of a Go-Go coming your way. And also, Book Was Better is coming back. I don't know which day it's coming back, but I have read two books. Just waiting on the host to say, i record with you now, and then we'll record. And uh, then I'll put it in your ear holes. Simple as that. But if you want to keep track, go to fruitlesspursuits.com. Links to iTunes, our Facebook discussion group, Facebook page. Just basically go to all the links, like everything you can. Just be a buddy, be a pal. Where the bloody hell are you? Where the bloody hell are mm. you when it comes to uh, supporting what we're doing Absolutely. here? Absolutely, yes. And, uh, you know, if you want to contribute more to all of this silly bullshit that we're doing, you can uh, give us some Patreon money. Yep. And, if you want. Um, if you want. If you, you can, don't, that's fine. You can sponsor your very own sound mm. on the podcast and uh, we'll, make, we'll find a way to work it in as naturally and professionally <laughs> As we've um, worked in all the other sounds there. So if you're like, oh gosh, I'd like to hear um, a real crack of fart uh, every, every time there's a new movie trailer or whatever, um, yeah. just let us know. Uh, do something for us, like a five star review or something yes. like that. Yeah. Let us know and um, we'll put you on the uh, sort of, you know, like places, workplaces and stuff. Uh, also, war memorials, things like that, have honour boards. Oh, like uh, sponsored by... Yeah, mm. you know, to sort of um, commemorate things. We'll we'll add you to the board. Mm-hmm. And, um, you know, look, there's only three spaces on here, but look at this. This is going to blow your mind. It could be that many. Oh, wow. That's, yeah. that's a lot of spots. That's a lot of spots. So uh, get reviewing, get excited, get yourself... On the board! Oh, Mum, give us a bit of that buttercup butter country, country split. split. Will you, Mum? Fuck oath. <laughs> All right. Well, that's the show. <laughs> We're sorry. <laughs> <laughs> it won't be as entertaining next week, we promise. 
Um, I, I think there'll be a point when they will actually smoothly just transition into the things that we're talking about. Mm. Um, might take a little while, uh, but, uh, you know, this is episode 175. We'll get good one day. We'll, we'll aim. We'll mm. aim high and uh, see how we go. All right. Mm. Well, thanks for listening. See you next time. There won't be another camera.